This demonstration covers registering the array management provider and provisioning Extreme I.O. volumes through VPLEX Integrated Array Services. The VPLEX Integrated Array Services VIAS, uses the REST AMP type for the Extreme I.O. array support. As a prerequisite, the VPLEX and Extreme I.O. array need to be zoned following best practices. The REST AMP supporting VIAS with Extreme I.O. arrays does not require additional software. The provider is on the Extreme I.O. array itself. You need to register the AMP as type REST within VPLEX. Each Extreme I.O. array is registered for VIAS in a one-to-one -one relationship with VPLEX clusters. Multiple Extreme I.O. arrays need to be individually registered in VPLEX. The integrated array services of VPLEX 5.5 support the Extreme I.O. releases 3 and 4. New features of release 4 are not supported. We will use Unisphere for VPLEX for provisioning Extreme I.O. storage. It is possible to use the VPLEX command line or REST API. Select Provision Storage. There is an Extreme I.O. cluster connected to the VPLEX cluster 1. Wizards are available to provision storage to register an array management provider. Let's choose Provisioning Overview and learn the steps to provision storage. Emphasis will be on registering the REST AMP and creating provisioning storage jobs to create virtual volumes provided from the Extreme I.O. cluster. The provisioning overview offers a step-by-step -step on how to use VPLEX to provision storage. The VPLEX cluster needs to be selected. Step 1 is to register the AMP provider. Let's start with registering the provider. Select the provider type for the Extreme I.O. cluster. REST. The mass changes and asks now to select an array as an Extreme I.O. cluster has a one-to-one -one relationship with VPLEX. This differs from the SMIS provider registration. The provider name can be a user-friendly name. The IP address is the IP address of the Extreme I.O. management server. The default port used for the HTTPS connection is 443. Username and password are again for the XMS. Leave the SSL box checked as HTTPS is used. Click OK and the Confirm certificate will pop up. For the provider to communicate with the Extreme I.O. array, you need to confirm this SSL certificate. This step should have successfully registered the REST AMP. In the list of AMPs, the newly registered AMP shows up. The next two steps will be skipped for the purpose of this video. Step 2 will register the initiators that access the virtual VPLEX volumes. Step 3 creates a storage view that includes the initiators and VPLEX ports to control host access to virtual volumes. These configurations have already been done. Step 4 launches the provisioning wizard to guide through the provisioning storage and exposing the storage to hosts. Storage volumes can be created with VIAS using existing pools. First, an existing VPLEX consistency group can be selected or the wizard also offers the possibility to create a new one. Let's create a new one. The type of consistency group determines where and how the storage provider wizard will create storage. The CG type can be local or distributed. For the purpose of this video, we select local and enter a name. Next is to determine the volume options, local or additional local mirroring for high availability. Other values to enter are the number of volumes, capacity of volumes, the volume base name, and a specified job name. In the third step, the array for the volume provisioning is selected. For the purpose of the video, an Extreme I.O. array is selected and a corresponding pool. Extreme I.O. does not have the concept of pools, but in order to provide consistency across all array types, a default pool is automatically created for each array named default pool. Select this pool and then have the storage group automatically assigned by the wizard or select the storage group from a list. In this list only storage groups with VPLEX ports are shown. The storage group shown is really an Extreme IO initiator group with VPLEX ports as Extreme IO again does not work with storage groups but has instead initiator groups. Select from the list of existing storage views the view you want to put the provision volumes in as storage views expose storage to hosts. The other option is not to assign a storage view. 
The review screen allows you to look at the job details before the job is started. The provision storage button starts the job. The results show that the new consistency group was created and that the virtual volume provisioning job has started. The provided link for the job status can be used for more details. Open the provision job status window and select the job from the list and open the provision job properties window. The job status would indicate if the job is still running or is completed. Creating storage on Extreme IO arrays through VIS is extremely fast and might only take seconds. Let's take a look at what the VIS job created on the Extreme IO array. Select Configuration. The volume list shows the four VPLEX volumes that were just created through VIS. We can also see four other volumes that had been manually created before. The new volumes were mapped and are now part of the Extreme IO Initiator group for VPLEX. Also created for the VIS created volumes was a VPLEX VIS volume folder where these new volumes reside. Back in Unisphere for VPLEX, let's take a look at the newly created virtual volumes. These virtual volumes were created and put into the selected consistency group. The devices are shown here with capacity, virtual volumes including health and status. The storage volumes are shown here. The provision type is VIS and the vendor shows that Extreme IO. The storage view used shows the four created virtual volumes that were added. So the provision storage wizard executed all the necessary steps from the creation of storage volumes, creating VPLEX virtual volumes and making them available in the storage view to a host system. This ends the demonstration of provisioning Extreme IO volumes to VIS in VPLEX Geosynchrony 5.5.